This week marks the opening of the inquiry to the Grenfell Tower fire, uh, which occurred six months ago to the day today. And in that intervening period, those six months, I've been trying to document some of the harms that have been generated by the awful events on that at night and that morning. Uh, and I want to talk a bit about some of those today in four categories, really. First of all, I want to talk about some of the physical harms. Uh, now, some of these are quite obvious. 71 people, it's now officially said, lost their lives that, that night and that morning in the fire. And we also know that many other people were injured, not through burns, actually, because most of the people who were burned were killed, unfortunately, but through, uh, uh, through, through uh, uh, fractures and also through head injuries, particularly trying to, uh, trying to get out of the burning building in the dark amidst the smoke. But there are other less obvious physical health effects associated with what happened that night. There were various uh, toxins released into the air by the fire and they will have some long-term health effects on some of the residents and the local community, unfortunately. But again, there were even less, less obvious health effects. People who had problems with drug and alcohol dependency in the tower and in the area are likely to have those problems exacerbated by their experiences of that night in the immediate aftermath. As well as people who've been put into temporary accommodation, there were high levels associated with deprivation, in fact, high levels of, of illnesses such as uh, obesity, uh, diabetes, um, high levels of cholesterol and all of those of course are, are mitigated by control of a diet but when you're in a and b accommodation or hotel you can't control what goes into your food so likely to be likely to be health effects there as well there are also various psychological and emotional harms associated with the events that night obviously on the part of survivors people will will be experiencing loss uh, loss of their family loss of their friends loss of loved ones loss of pets loss of possessions that can't be replaced uh, there'll be people who will be experiencing guilt, a guilt of survival, and certainly there are also uh, poor mental health effects on, on, on emergency uh, service workers who attended the fire that night. So many of these will be felt for many years to come, unfortunately, by people in and around the tower. A whole series of economic harms and effects have also been generated by what happened at Grenfell Tower. Uh, these are borne by the local authority, the local council, who will have to uh, uh, pay for legal legal fees, pay for, to relocate residents. These are also felt by central government in terms of money, extra money to emergency services such as firefighters. But they're also going to be, also going to be paid for by councils across the country, where councils which are now uh, desperately removing flammable cladding from tower blocks. The last set of harms I, I think are kind of cultural or relationship, relational and, and these in many respects uh, I can sum up in one word, the contempt in which the residents were, were held in the tower. The residents in Grenfell Tower had warned about the dangers of a fire, had warned about a kind of high fatality incident and they weren't listened to. But the problem is that since the fire happened many of those residents still haven't, the survivors still haven't been listened to. Uh, they've been made promises that have been broken. They were told they were told they'd be rehoused within three weeks, and six months later, four four fifths of those residents who were relocated are still in temporary accommodation. They were told they'd be consulted over who who would head the inquiry, and in fact, they weren't consulted at all. They were just told it would be Sir Martin Morbick. So the contempt, which in in a sense led to the fire, has been reproduced after the fire. As somebody said outside the tower around two a.m. that morning, people are dying in there because our lives don't matter. And unfortunately, those lives still seem not to matter very much in the six months that have followed the fire.